Okay, now we're on to section two of the textbook, um, the next two chapters, uh, four and five, or five and six. Chapter five, we're going to cover algebraic terms, roots, and powers. And we are in the algebraic fundamentals section. Chapter six will cover fractions and literal numbers. The objectives in chapter five then is al identifying algebraic expressions and terms terms which we've already looked at uh, in the previous section and uh, done some solving of those terms and expressions. Uh, in this case, in this chapter, we're going to look at the difference between real and literal numbers and get a definition and a feel for what a literal is. Uh, finding the squares and the square roots of both real and literal numbers. And then we've got a little bit of application again, looking at Ohm's law and then developing problem solving techniques. So in looking at the difference between literals and real numbers, real numbers then are any number 7, 468, 3.25, etc. And we also call them um, constants. They also become coefficients uh, often for literals. Letters or alpha characters are used to represent values that vary. And these then become our literal numbers. In electronics, the circuit parameters are called circuit variables. So if we look at an application, Ohm's law. Typically, Ohm's law, um, it can be thought of like this in a triangle with voltage on top and current and resistance on the bottom. And this plays out very well because what we're really looking at here is a product of the two on the bottom giving us a uh, current and resistance relationship for voltage, but if we look down the sides, current is equal to a quotient of voltage and resistance, and resistance is a quotient of voltage and current. So if you ever run into a problem and you want to keep straight, how do I identify the relationship, the mathematical relationship between voltage, current, and resistance, just sketch out this little triangle, fill in the blocks, and then you'll have uh, no problem then identifying and creating the correct um, mathematical relationship for voltage, current, and resistance. An algebraic expression then is a group of numbers that contain a variable. The numbers can be both real and literal. So as I said, um, we can have a relationship that contains both and often the uh, real number becomes the coefficient. If we look at this last term here where it has three terms, 3AB has a real and a literal value, but the 3 becomes the coefficient associated with AB. So here we have three terms in the expression. If we have one term, as in 6A, we have a monomial. If we have two terms, we have what's as referred to as a binomial or a polynomial, which is setting us up for the last one we saw here with three or more terms, trinomial, which is also a binomial. The numerical coefficient then of an algebraic term is the real part of the term. If no coefficient value is given, it's understood to be a value of one. So if we look at the term 6xy, 6 is the numerical coefficient and the terms, and the term, um, this should be xy, xy, uh, the one is considered to be the coefficient. Now dealing with exponents, we've seen um, in previous sections how we can uh, add and subtract and multiply and divide um, values that are exponents. Let's take this a little step farther. The exponent then tells us how many times the base is multiplied by itself. In the past, we've used the base 10, and we've seen how that conveniently plays into the metric system and our exponential values for the um, engineering notation. But you can see here, we can apply it to any value. So in this case, we have a 5 cubed, which relates to a product of three fives, which equals 125. We can do exactly the same thing with a literal, where we have here triple x's. x cubed 
if we said that x was equal to 4, then becomes 4 cubed, or 64. We can solve problems that contain literals and numbers only if we know their value. So this cannot be solved any more than what we have here on the left without a, a value. As soon as we give it a value, we can solve it to completion. When real numbers and literal numbers appear in the same term of an algebraic expression, we can determine the value of the term if we know the value of one of the literal numbers. So just like we said before, we can solve this only if we are given a value. So if we look at the, t the first one, we say x is equal to 3. Well, here we have an unsolved um, term, at 6x squared. We can't take it any farther than that until we substitute 3 for x, and as soon as we do, we are able to solve the problem to completion. And we've done the same thing with the second and third um, examples here, okay, where we let a equal 7.3, we can solve it out to 53.3. Key point, if a sign of a grouping is used, then all the numbers within that group are acted on by the exponent. So in this case, you can see we have a, b, both terms inside of the, bra of the parentheses is squared. So in this case, it becomes a squared times b squared. If we were asked to solve this by, by uh, identifying values of a equal to 3 and b equal to 4, we can take what we have in the first step here, continue to solve it out, make the substitution, 3 squared, times 4 squared gives us 19 by 16, or 144. We can also see that we can solve what's inside of the parentheses first. 3 times 4 is 12, square it, and we come up with the same value. So we haven't violated anything. Sometimes it's easier to solve that way. On the other side, Looking at, looking at roots, the square root of a number is one of its two equal factors. What does that mean? Well, for the number 36, we know that the square root of 36 is actually 6 times 6. So we have two equal factors uh, involved here for solving for the square root of 36. Two square roots, actually there are two square roots because you can also have a negative value, and since we know the rule says a negative times a negative is a positive, we end up with the same values. So in this case, we could have the square root of 36 equaling 6 or minus 6, and there are cases when both of those have to be considered in your solution. The sign that we normally use for taking the square root is called the radical. The radical is the little uh, hat that goes on top of the number. So if we write the square root of 36, in this case the 2 is understood as the square root, or we can write it as 36 to the 1 half power, and in any case each of those represents values that we can, or expressions that we can solve for, and come at and arrive at the same value of 6. The cube root and so on has the same representation x under the radical, the cube root on top is equal to x to the one-third. Okay, it just depends. Um, the, the, the biggest place that I see the one-third used is some word processors. Um, the, the radical doesn't work very well and doesn't give you a good cube root sign, so using x to the one-third uh, works out better and it means the same thing. So if we look at a couple examples here, in this case, we've got an entire expression under the radical, 2x plus 3y. So we make our substitution, 4 for x and um, a y, 5 for y. Replace the terms. Now we can add the two terms together. 2 times 4 plus 3 times 5 gives us the square root of 23. 
Today, the easiest way to solve that is plug it into your calculator and let the calculator give you the value. The only thing you have to be careful of is your significant digits. Based upon you know what values you were given, um, initially the accuracy or the significant digits become important. In this case, we're taking an x squared, a square root of the x squared and product of y squared, and we're adding a value of 4 to it. So again, we do the substitution, take the square root of the product this time, where up here we had the sum, take the square root of the product, the product being 400, and then add 4 to it. So the square root of 400 is 20, add 4, we get 24, and now we have a value of 2.40 times 10. Again, we do that so that we make sure that we capture the um, significant digits. Back to the application then. Um, DC In DC, uh, it's very common to solve for, as I said before, Ohm's law. So in this case, if we're trying to find the voltage, E, and we're given the two knowns, the current and the resistance, 5 milliamps, 2.7 K ohms. Again, we make our substitution into the expression for Ohm's law. 5 milliamps, we can move terms around, move the decimal point around, and or um, move out a value of a factor of 10. In this case, we're going to substitute the 10 to the minus third for the milliamp, and we're going to substitute 10 to the third for kilo. This becomes um, a very uh, easy step because what's going to happen is the 10 to the minus third and the 10 to the third are going to cancel each other out because you're going to end up with 10, 3, minus 3, and you're just left with the two coefficients here. In, in this case, uh, the, the, the real numbers 5 and 2.7. So prefixes are changed to their powers of 10 values to solve problems, but it's standard practice to use prefixes instead of powers of 10 in the answer. So we would put the prefixes back in if we needed it. Okay, in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to use a variation of Ohm's law where a substitution and a uh, moving of terms around allows us to solve for voltage when we know the power being dissipated in a circuit or consumed in a circuit times the resistance. That value becomes voltage is equal to the square root of power times resistance. Okay, so again, when we put our values in, 100 milliwatts and 10 k ohms, again, you can see milli 10 to the minus third, k 10 to the third is going to cancel out, and all we're really left with under the radical is 100 times 10 which is 1,000, we take the square root of 1,000 and we get 31.6 volts. So the manipulation makes solving the problem a little easier. Another re relationship is the uh, relationship we're going to see for calculating capacitive reactants. Okay, this is an AC circuit relationship where we have frequency and um, capacitance in the denominator times 2 pi because it is a periodic uh, relationship we want to make sure that um, we have every 2 pi the, in the cycle uh, of an AC circuit that we have the recurring value so that's why we put the 2 pi in there so now all we have to do is look to see do we have values of frequency and capacitance well we do we were given a frequency of seven and a half K, K, K hertz, okay, which is um, seven and a half times 10 to the third, and a capacitance of half a microfarad, micro being 10 to the minus sixth. So when we make these substitutions into the denominator, we end up with values that have an exponent of 10 to the third and 10 to the minus six. Well, we know now that handling the exponents is going to leave us with 10 to the minus third, okay? So, um, another way of handling this is let's just take this term, 
the 10 to the minus 6, which is part of the product, you can disconnect it and move it into the numerator as we've done here. And in doing so, we, in essence, subtract 3 from 6 through the manipulation and end up with 10 to the third in the numerator. So now all we have is basically real numbers in the denominator. 2 pi, 7.5 hertz, half a farad, and we end up with 42.4 um, ohms. Okay. And another representation here, um, we're looking at a way that we can calculate all of the impedance in a circuit by combining its real and its imaginary um, impedances. So we have the real part of the circuit resistance and x squared the part of the imaginary. So again, if we're given values just like before, we make the substitution, you know, we do the math. If we can do any anything to remove the exponents, exponential values, we can do that. In this case, we don't because we have 10 to the third and 10 to the third both being positive. So those will both combine to um, not be uh, not be able to cancel out. So as we do the math here, then we have a value of 3.14 times 10 to the seventh plus 1.6 times 10 to the seventh after we, after we uh, make our terms the same. And when we take the square root then of 7.47 times 10 to the seventh, we end up with 6.88 times 10 to the third or 6.88 K ohms. Okay, and again, the, the, the steps that are that you don't see here uh, were performed on the calculator, okay? You just have to make sure you don't um, get outside of your significant figures. But as you run this through, do your products, do your sums, do your square root, and in the end, you have resolved your problem to an impedance now equal to 6.88 times 10 to the third or K ohms.